Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest. This time on Color Quest, I'm actually going to take you on several weeks of a commission that I've been hired to do to make a two-dimensional piece of artwork using naturally dyed textiles. And I wanna take you through the whole process of how I'm gonna go about finding the color, extracting the color, and then in fact, making something beautiful with those textiles. Now, this is what I do as a part of my creative practice, and I'm excited to show you how I'm actually taking the tutorials that I'm sharing with you and utilizing them in my own practice. So, join me as we start this adventure, and we are going to head off to actually buy the canvases that I'm gonna to use to create the pieces. And it's kind of fun because the canvases are huge. So let's jump in the car, head down to Seattle and start working on this commission. I'm so happy and excited to share this with you because I absolutely adore natural color. That one's empty. <laughs> We parked in a two hour time limit, which was exactly how much time we needed to put together the contraption. And how are you feeling about it, Cherry? Amazing! Yeah, so we're gonna hope that we have no problems going down the highway with this. But I think it seems pretty, pretty stable. So wish us luck and we will see you up north.
These are the first dies that I did where I just put pre-mordant fabric, different kinds of fabric. I've got silk, I've got bamboo. I dyed them separately, a chunk together and a chunk again, and brought out these really, really pretty different neutral colors. The client has a very specific idea that she wants in terms of a palette, which I'm trying to achieve with some of the birch that I foraged for in Idaho. It, they're beautiful colors, absolutely beautiful colors, and they're supposed to mimic the hills of Chelan, which is up on the eastern slope of the Cascades in Washington State, and it's very brown up there. So there's just some really lovely shades. Now, what I did then is I took the same dye pot here and I played around. And you can see, although these are wet, so it's not really fair to compare them, you can see how the color here is maybe you could say brighter and that these are more subdued. And that is achieved with the iron. So iron really does work on that process of saddening colors. They, it tones them down and actually I, I love the effect. <laughs> Quite frankly, I am an iron fan. So in any event, once these dry, I'll take a little picture. I'll reassess. Like I said, maybe I'll dip this one again. I don't know. Maybe not. And I'll go from there. It's exciting to see it come together. So I just pulled out some various dyes here that came from two different plant sources. One was pine and the other one is spruce, both branches. And I played around with adding alum and iron to the pot itself. So I had, had made the dye and had the previous colors that I showed are from that. Those, actually I only use birch for that. But then in here, I decided to try a few things. And this is one way that you can change the colors and that is by having different textiles as well. And then prepping the textiles differently. So for example, this is bamboo. Now, this bamboo was pre-mordant in soy milk and then added to the pot of spruce that had been altered with iron and alum in the pot itself. And wow, I mean, that's just a crazy color. It looks a little more green in the camera and it has a kind of a blue tint to it. But that was also in the same pot as this one which has what you would have expected, I suppose, in terms of a response to the all-in-one mordant in the dye pot. And this is cotton, as opposed to this cotton, <laughs> which you can see is actually quite different in terms of the color that it cr created. And then this, which is linen. So, I mean, I got some crazy diversity and this is what I do in my own practice. These are being utilized in a commission piece that I'm filming about and I'm going to have so much variation here in terms of value and color. There's some darker pieces down there, some real grays all the way to greens and then yellows. And then this piece, which I decided to put into the pot that had the alum and the iron and not pre mordant it. And very little color came on it. I'm gonna let this one dry and I'll look at it at that point out in a little bit clearer light. And actually here, this is the same. And I'll see, I may decide to dye again, or I might keep it because for design purposes, it's really nice to have variations, both in value 
as well as color so that makes a big difference so this next to this is going to look really nice on because it's going to create this beautiful contrast and that's what's going to catch your eye well it's been several weeks of prep and today i am going to start assembling my very large commission it is five feet by six feet and I have another one to do for the same client, which is I think three by six. But today I'm actually gonna start on the canvas that is the five by six. And it's in my kitchen studio <laughs> where I do all of my work. And you, it's pretty exciting. Actually, I'm very, very pumped, but I don't have a lot of room. So as an artist who is still working from a home environment for a studio, uh, you got to make do with what you've got. And I'm not going to let the limitations of my kitchen and dining room uh, keep me from going larger with my work. So I'm very excited to have this opportunity and to share it with you. So. I will keep filming as I'm creating it. It's going to be tricky on how I'm going to film, but you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Let's go. There's where all the magic happens on the stovetop over there. And you are seeing a very unedited view of what I live in on the regular and the big giant canvas that I'm going to be working on over the next few weeks. Excited to see how it all comes together. Here is the inventory. Been working on dyeing all of this over several weeks and it has now sat and set and it is ready to start building the work for my very special client. Excited. All of these colors are coming from Idaho. There's some of them Pacific Northwest, but it's all from a very special location where I foraged for myself and the client. And so we're going to be embedding these unique colors specific to an area that's special for all of us and for the client as a sort of memorial to a family member. And I think it's a really special way to add something really beautiful to a piece of artwork that is connected to a landscape and a memory. So I am building this canvas based upon where the home is located and that is in Chelan, Washington. And if you know anything about Chelan, it's a beautiful lake, super deep water lake in the high desert plateau of Washington State on the eastern side of the Cascade Range. And the piece that the client has commissioned is going to be an abstraction of Lake Chelan and the area around it, the mountains and so forth. So because I'm going to be adding a water element in terms of a color to this canvas, I need some kind of way to make blue. And as you might know, in natural colors, blue's a little bit more complicated to get. So what I have done is I am going to use a Japanese indigo from a company that produces one that is water soluble. If you know anything about indigo, typically you have to put it in a vat with a fermentation process. Because indigo is not water soluble, that's what allows it to become to a point where you can, in fact, once you introduce air to it, it will turn into that blue. So I went ahead and got some of this Japanese indigo so that I could simply pour it into some water and be able to create some blues. I've never used it before, so it's kind of exciting for me. The client has asked for something that's relatively light, so I'm going to do one pass, and it seems very simple, sort of a few minute soak and massage into the fibers in a cool dye bath. So I'm going to film that so that you can see, and let's see what we get in terms of blue. So here I have my vat of water, and I have weighed the fabric that I'm going to use, and it is about 65 grams. So the recommendation is to do approximately 10 times the amount, which would have been about 650 milliliters. I put that in, it didn't feel like enough, so I went ahead and upped it by another 500. So I have a little over a liter of water in here. It's supposed to be just enough water to cover 
the fabric. So I've gone ahead and soaked the fabric so the fabric's wet and ready to go. And then I wanted to show you the indigo. I don't speak Japanese. Everything is in Japanese, but just went online and they have some instructions on what to do. So let's see how this goes. Wish me luck. I have my wet fabric here. I'm using a combination of soy milk pre-mordant and some tannin pre-mordant because that's what I had available. I'm actually running low on my soy milk. So later today I'm gonna to be making more soy milk. I've got the milk ready to go. I'm just washing the fabrics now. Anyway, the first thing that told me to do is to shake it. So I'm just gonna shake it pretty well. The indigo rests on the bottom and I've had this for a little while now couple months actually. I'm not going to use the whole thing. This is a hundred milliliter bottle, which means I could dye, I believe up to about a hundred grams of textile. So since I only have about 65 grams, I'm going to go ahead and just use half this bottle. After I use it, I just seal it up and store it in the fridge. So this has just been sitting on a shelf and now it'll go into the fridge. They say it has a life of about six months. So I will have to use the second half of it probably within the next month or two, which shouldn't be a problem because I might actually need more for this piece. The client has ordered two pieces, <laughs> so both with a water feature. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and go from there. The wrapping packaging from Japan is always so awesome. They really have amazing packaging. So we're gonna pour about half of this bottle in. It's, oh wow, that is gorgeous. Look at that. I don't know. Why not even pour half in? I'll just put a quarter in and we'll try it out. Wow, that looks so pretty. <laughs> okay. So I'm just putting in a quarter. It looks so vibrant. So stir it up. And we will start putting the fabric in and kneading it. You can see there's a yellowish hue to some of these pieces. The tannin is actually pomegranate that I made from pomegranate skins. So I'm kind of curious whether or not the blue will translate or if it will turn to a green. It's not looking terribly green right now. So according to the instructions, I should only have to do this for a few minutes. Just kind of knead it in to get the blue for the first pass. And since the client wants a light blue, I might only need to make one pass. Otherwise, I will need to dip dye it again. But it's looking pretty good as a sort of light blue. When it dries, of course, it's going to dry a different color. A lighter color, things always dry lighter. So I think I will continue to knead this for a little while and take it out and let it dry and see what color we get. After day one of design, that in the background you can see is what's completed. Actually, I've done the first process. I've set up the design itself. None of the textile behind me is actually adhered yet to the canvas, so that will be today's step. It probably will take 
take more than one day. It's quite a large canvas, five by six, and the gluing process is pretty tedious. The design is super fun. I had a great time yesterday. I would have recorded it, but I don't have a great place to set a camera up to show me actually working. And I really got into the flow yesterday, which is always wonderful when that happens and you're creating. So I just plowed it out, honestly. It took about four hours and I'm really excited about it. It is a abstraction of Lake Chelan and the area there, which is where the piece is gonna be living in the client's home. So you can kind of see the blue coming through there that's supposed to represent Lake Chelan. And then the more neutral colors down here is sort of the landscape of that area, which is sort of high desert plateau. So it's got lots of browns and golds. And then the sky itself is neutral, sort of grayish color. I achieved that through doing an iron shift on a couple of different barks and branches that I foraged. So they're all interconnected because the browns are the neutral that comes in and then I shifted them to create the grays so they're really nicely tied in together. The blue is a combination of things. Some is indigo that I did when I was in Oaxaca last year, but I also, since blue is tough to find in nature, I went ahead and worked with some Japanese indigo. It allowed me to get this really light, pretty blue for the water of Chelan. So I'm gonna head over and start the gluing process. Okay, day two is now done, and I have adhered another section of the canvas. And I'm going to tell you that I absolutely love how this is turning out. So the lighting isn't great in here. Uh, I'm going to turn you around and just kind of pass over uh, bits of the canvas so that you can see what it looks like when it's adhered versus when it's not adhered. And then I'm gonna work on the third section and hopefully be done very, very soon. This is the first section that I did. And as you can see, everything has been adhered. It takes on almost like a leather look to it with these more neutral tones here. Absolutely love the way that it looks. And as I move around the piece, these are the kinds of things that I'm just most interested in. So as I'm adhering different kinds of textiles over one another, you get these awesome edges that are revealed and new different squares are kind of made, like this dark area is made because of adhering silk over this cotton. You get a whole new section here, which is probably my favorite part about how I'm making these. Then as I move around to this corner here, this is actually, some of this is indigo from Mexico, and this is actually indigo from Japan, and really made these light, light, beautiful light blues that I just love. And then we move into this section over here, which is a lighter, more palette of gray, and bone or ecru colors. And this even, it looks white, but it was even dyed. And I believe this might have been spruce branch. So just getting all of these different neutrals in here, meeting the client's you know request of how sort of the color palette and how this is supposed to be looking like the area around Chelan. And then when I move over here, this is the section that I haven't finished. And you can see how the pieces I've just sort of designed how I want them to go. And then as I move through and start adhering them, I'll have to make some decisions and add some pieces. This is all adhered here. And so then there'll be some spaces that I have to make some decisions about how these are gonna go. So that is it. I'm really super <laughs> enjoying it and really happy with the way that it's turning out. I'm excited to start making work this size. I think it's a great next step and 
It really, really emphasizes the sort of sumptuous beauty of not only the textiles, but of the natural colors, which are just all so beautifully harmonized. So I'm gonna get going on this next section. Here we are with Cherry, Hello. the client, the one who has ordered the two pieces for her house. So here we go. Here Woo. is piece number one. And this is a smaller piece. The size is three by five foot. So it's 36 inches by 60 inches. And I will zoom you in. It's a little more yellow in this picture on the video. My camera makes it more yellowish, which is not yellow at all, but it's kind of hard to fix the lighting. But you can see the different pieces and the different fabrics. It's got a lot of texture in it. All these different kinds, as you've seen over the past two months as I've been videoing it you can see all the different times there's linen there's silk there's cotton and bamboo and a little bit of velvet and yeah a little shiny velvet there so you can see it picks up the light and yeah so this is the piece for their master bedroom very very excited yay Thanks, Cherry. Thanks, Mark. Here is the reveal of the largest piece as we pull away here. And this is the second, well, I made it first. It's the second piece. And it is 60 by 72, so five foot by six foot. And this will be going, yay. Oh, yeah, that's good for comparison. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! And again, it's more yellowish in this lighting, sadly, than it really is. And even indoors, it doesn't have the same cast. So there you have it. That was, gosh, almost two months, I think, of working on it. And I'm super, super happy. Thank you so much for joining me. You get to see what I do with all of the textiles that I'm showing you how to make all the different colors so you get an idea of what I'm actually doing with the natural dyes. Hi. Hey. Carrie and Marie back. We are going to be packing up that beautiful piece of artwork and taking it to get framed today. So I wanted to jump on here with Cherry, yay. Yay. And uh, watch us try to <laughs> put it on the top of that car once again this we got time this. yeah we got, we got it. it we got it this time we're not going to use twine like we did last time <laughs> we actually have some straps so join us as we try to get this thing to the to the frame shop and there it is again turn you around there it is ready to go yay look at that all of its glory it now has a name and the name of this piece is notch and that is in reference to Lake Chelan, which is a notched portion, a valley that's super, super deep. So there you go, this is notch.
Thank <laughs> you.